In this video, I'll show you how to use the accelerometer on your microbit. An accelerometer is the same type of electronic sensor used in phones and video game controllers to detect when you tilt or shake them. If you need to learn how to set up your microbit for the first time, check out the first video in this tutorial series, linked in the video description. In our previous video, we used the motion detection blocks from the input menu which have a drop-down menu that let you select a variety of options for the orientation or acceleration of the microbit, and you can trigger specific actions based on those motions. For example, we showed a simple program that displays a left arrow when you tilt the microbit to the left, and a right arrow when you tilt the microbit to the right. However, if you remember watching this run on the physical microbit or tried it yourself, we had to tilt it pretty far to make the arrows appear. The on-tilt left and on-tilt right blocks don't give us any control over the angle, and this is where the accelerometer comes in. So if we go to the input menu, you will see that there is a block for acceleration in mg, which stands for milli g, or 1 1,000th of a g, which if you remember from the previous video, 1 g is the acceleration due to Earth's gravity, or 9.81 meters per second squared. We'll actually talk about that a little more later in this video. For now, we are going to click on More under Input, and we see that there is a block for rotation in degrees. And if we drag this out to our program, we can select either Pitch or Roll. To explore how this works, we're going to use a new tool called the Serial Monitor. So you can expand the Blocks menu by clicking on Advanced here, and that will give you an expanded menu with more options. We're going to click on Serial, and then drag out a Serial Right Line block, and snap that inside our Forever Loop. Then we're going to drag our Rotation Degrees Pitch block inside the Serial Right Line block. What that's going to do is constantly or continuously print out the rotation for pitch in degrees to the Serial Monitor. We can delete these other two blocks because we're not going to need them for now. Now, I'm going to click on Show Data Simulator. This will switch the window to show the data for the simulator in my web browser. And we'll see that if I move my mouse around, the simulator lets me tilt the micro bit back and forth and left and right. And then when I tilt it back and forth, the pitch angle printed out down here changes. So when the micro bit is perfectly flat, the pitch is zero. When I tilt it back, the pitch decreases, or is a negative angle, and when I tilt it forward, the pitch increases, or is a positive angle. I can click the Go Back button to go back to my program, use the drop-down menu to change the angle to Roll, and then go back to Show Data Simulator to see what now happens when I tilt the micro bit left to right. We see that when it's flat, the roll angle is zero degrees, when I tilt it to the left, the roll angle decreases and becomes a negative number. And when I tilt it to the right, the roll angle increases and becomes a positive number. You can also download this code to your physical microbit and then click Show Data Device to show the data from the physical microbit instead of the simulator. Note that your microbit must remain connected to the computer with a USB cable for this to work. Otherwise, it is unable to send data to the serial monitor. Now that we understand how to get the pitch or roll angle from the accelerometer, let's revisit what we mentioned earlier, and make a certain character display on screen once the micro bit is tilted past a certain angle. I can do that using an if-else statement, which we covered in an earlier video in this tutorial series. Again, you can find the whole series linked in the video description. So. I'm going to go to the logic menu, drag out an if-else block, and snap that inside my forever block. Now, I would like to add a condition that lets me check whether my roll angle is less than or greater than a certain number. So, I'm going to go back to the logic menu, and drag out a comparison block, and snap it inside the condition for the if statement. This block has a drop-down menu that lets me select how I would like to compare the first number to the second number. For example, checking whether they are equal, not equal, 
or if the first number is less than the second number. I'm going to choose that option. Now I'm going to go to the input menu, click on more, drag out my rotation in degrees block, snap that into the location for the first number, and use the drop down menu to select roll. I'm then going to type in the number that I would like to compare it to here. I'm going to pick a small angle like negative 10 degrees. So if the roll angle is less than negative 10 degrees, I would like to show the left arrow on the screen. So I'm going to use the show LEDs block to draw my own left arrow icon. Now I am going to add another condition to my if else statement by clicking the plus icon and I'm going to right click my first condition and select duplicate. I'm going to snap that down into the condition for the else if part of the statement. And I'm going to change this using the drop down menu to a greater than comparison. And I'm going to change the number to positive 10 degrees. So I would like to display the right icon on screen if the micro bit is tilted to the right more than 10 degrees. I'm going to duplicate my show LEDs icon, snap that into place, and change the icon so it shows a right arrow. Finally, if neither of these conditions is true, the micro bit is not tilted to the left more than negative 10 degrees, or tilted to the right more than positive 10 degrees, I would like to simply clear the screen. So I'm going to add a clear screen block in here in the last part of the if else statement. I can check in the simulator and see that the motions now appear much more subtle. I only have to move my mouse to the left or right a little bit to tilt the simulated micro bit and make the arrows appear. And it has to be pretty balanced right in the middle for the screen to clear. If we run this code on the physical micro bit, we can see that it's much more sensitive than what we saw earlier in the video. Although that code wasn't exactly the same because I didn't have it clear the screen when the micro bit was flat, we can see that I don't have to tilt it anywhere near as far to activate the arrows. Now, if I want to change the sensitivity to tilt, all I have to do is change these numbers. For example, if I change them to negative 30 and positive 30, then I'll have to tilt it farther to activate the arrows on the screen. If you have some programming experience, you might be thinking that I should be using variables here instead of just typing the numbers in directly, but we're going to save that topic for a future video. If you'd like a challenge, try to recreate what you saw at the beginning of the video, lighting up a single LED depending on both the pitch and the roll angles. We won't give away the code, but you can try it yourself. That's it for rotation for now, but what about straight line acceleration? You may remember from our previous video that we could select different acceleration values like 3G, 6G, or 8G from the drop down menu here in the motion detection block. And if we look in the input menu, we have this other block that we mentioned earlier in the video for acceleration in milli G, that's one one thousandth of a G, in the X, Y, or Z directions, or strength, which is the total acceleration combined from all three axes. On your micro bit, the X direction is to the left and right, the Y direction is forward and backward, and the Z direction is up and down, or in and out of the board or your screen for the simulated micro bit. Now we're not going to go into detail about the physics of how an accelerometer works in this video or how it can tell the difference between rotation or straight line acceleration. I will put a link in the video description with more of an explanation about that. Here we are just going to use the serial monitor to demonstrate the behavior again. So I'm going to get rid of my whole if else statement, or if you're logged in, you can save this program and create a new blank one if you'd like to follow along. But for now, I'm just going to delete that, get rid of this extra on shake block, go back to my serial menu and drag out another serial right line block and snap that inside my forever loop. And then I'm going to add the acceleration block here, where again, I can use the drop down menu to select the different accelerations. Now, this program is going to work better on the physical micro bit since your mouse does let you tilt the simulated micro bit in your browser, but you can't really shake it side to side. So I'm gonna go ahead and download the program to my physical micro bit, 
and then we'll click on show data device to see what I'm getting from the physical micro bit. So here I have the serial monitor open with the code running on my physical micro bit and I am printing out the X acceleration. And we can see that that acceleration changes if I shake the micro bit side to side, left to right is the X direction on the micro bit. And the acceleration changes a little bit, but nowhere near as much if I shake it backward and forward or up and down. So again, it's detecting the biggest acceleration in the X direction when I shake it horizontally. However, you will notice that the acceleration also changes if I tilt the micro bit. And again, this gets into the physics that we're not really going to cover in a lot of detail in this video. But the very quick explanation is that the micro bits accelerometer is also detecting the direction of gravity. So when the micro bit is perfectly horizontal like this, the gravity is pointing downward into the table and there's no gravity component in the X direction. But as I tilt the micro bit and the X axis is tilted, then there's a component of gravity in the X direction and the accelerometer picks that up even though the micro bit is holding still and it's not accelerating side to side. So again, the physics there are a little tricky in terms of how you differentiate between linear acceleration and tilt. But if you're doing a project where you can assume your micro bit is not rotating, for example, if it's just sitting flat on the table, then you can safely assume that any acceleration you detect is due to linear motion and not rotation. If I go back to my program and change to the Z acceleration and re-download since I'm using a physical micro bit, then go back to show data device, we'll see that even when the micro bit is sitting perfectly flat, I don't get zero, I get a large negative number. And again, that's because when the micro bit is flat like this, the Z axis is up and down into and out of the plane of the board. So it's detecting gravity in the Z direction. But if I turn my micro bit on its edge, so the Z axis is nearly horizontal, then the value gets closer to zero because there's no gravity in the Z direction in this orientation. If we switch back to the X acceleration, we'll notice something interesting. When I shake the micro bit as hard as I can, it appears that the acceleration is maxing out around plus or minus 2000 milliG. This is because the accelerometer has a default maximum range of plus or minus 2G. But if we go to input, more, and go down, we can see that there's a set accelerometer range block. So if I would like to detect higher accelerations, I can set this to 4G or 8G. For example, if I set it to 4G and re-download the program to my micro bit, and go back to show data device, we'll see that now when I shake the micro bit as hard as I can, it's going past plus or minus 2000 up to around plus or minus 4000. If I'd like to take an action when acceleration exceeds a certain threshold, I can do what I did earlier in the video for rotation and use an if else statement. So I'm going to drag out an if else statement, snap it inside my forever loop, use a comparison block, snap it inside the condition for the if statement. And then I'm going to compare my X acceleration to some number that I choose, remembering that this number can't be greater than the maximum range I've already set for the accelerometer. So for example, I'm going to change my range to 8G, but then remember that the acceleration block measures in milli-G or thousandths of a G. So I'm going to enter 4,000 here. If the X acceleration exceeds 4,000 milli-G, which is equal to 4G, then I'm going to say, okay, that was a little too much shaking. I'm going to show a frowny face and pause to keep that on screen for one second before I clear the screen. Otherwise, if the acceleration is below that value, I'm going to show a smiley face because that means I'm not shaking too much. Here's that code running on the physical micro bit, where we see that if I shake it just a little bit, I don't exceed 4000 milli-G and the smiley face stays on screen. However, if I shake it hard enough, I exceed the threshold and the frowny face appears. Note how, similar to what we saw for rotation, this approach with an if-else statement gives you more control than the motion detection block. 
This block only lets you select thresholds of 3, 6, or 8G total acceleration. It doesn't let you choose the direction. With an if else statement, you can choose the direction and any threshold you want. Check out the links in the video description for the rest of our microbit tutorial series and lots of fun science projects you can do with a microbit. For hundreds of other projects in all areas of science and engineering, check out our YouTube channel and be sure to subscribe so you never miss a new project. Thank you for helping us inspire the next generation of scientists and engineers.